In this video, we will learn about conditional statements in Python. We will evaluate expressions and run a specific block of codes depending if it returns true or false. Evaluating expressions in Python is similar to what we do in real life. In this example, we have Jesse and Maud. Jesse is 25 years old and Maud is 60. Now, I can compare their ages and ask Python if Jesse is older than Maud. If I run that code, Python will return false, so Jesse is younger than Walt. Similarly, I can just ask if Jesse is younger than Walt. In that case, Python returns true. So expression evaluation in Python always return a Boolean data type. It's either true or false. We will use decision structure in Python combining with expressions evaluation. And the simplest decision structure is the if statement. The Python syntax to define an if statement is the following. You first type if, then the condition to be evaluated, followed by colon. Now, our block starts and everything inside that block, you have what we call indentation. By convention, we use for space to every indentation level. Now, we can ask Python to run a specific block of code in case Jesse is younger than Walt. For that, we type if the expression we want to evaluate, in that case, just age less than what, and if that's true, we type print Jesse is younger than what. So I will comment that line, clean my terminal, and run that code. So to run that code again, you just type Python and the name of the file. So now we get Jesse is younger than what. Why? because that expression returns true. If we now check if Jesse is older than Walt, I clean my screen again and run. Look, there is nothing displayed to the terminal. It means that line 7 got completely ignored. Why? Because that expression returned false. And that's if statement. You define a block of code that will only be executed in case a given expression returns true. The second conditional structure is called if-else statement. We use if-else statement when dealing with variables which takes only two possible states, for instance, on, off, success or failure, correct or incorrect. It means that if the first option is not true, the second option is. All right, let me just comment that code and I will bring some codes that I have prepared already and then we have some, we save some time. All right, that's our example. It's a dice game and that's a pretty simple dice game. So we have 50% of probability of winning and also losing. Here, if row a number which is greater than three, you win, otherwise you lose. So when I said otherwise, I knew that there is only one alternative. So I either win or lose. If I run that code, we get you won. Why? Because 4, which is the value assigned to dice, is evaluated here, and then 4 is greater than 3, so it's going to return true. Therefore, the line 19 will be executed. So if the line if the line 19 is executed, the lines 20 and 21 are completely ignored. Perfect. If I now roll a dice and I get 2, we're going to evaluate that expression, and 2 is not greater than 3 and that expression will return false. Then we just have one alternative. That's the reason why we can use the if else statement. We just type else and look that I don't need now to evaluate again, because if that returns false, then it's for sure that I'm going to lose, right? So you're going to need, so you need to use if else statement every time you deal with such kind of variables. You have just two possibilities, two options. Perfect. Now I just run it again and I get you lost, obviously, because two is not greater than three. Another example would be I want to buy a flower to someone. Let's say that flower cost 15 euros, but my budget is only 10 euros. So when you look at it, when you look at it, we know that I don't have enough money. 
but Python at this time has no idea. So we should compare it. And then if say, so we can say if budget is greater, greater than or equal to flower price, flower price, right? If it's greater than or equal to, we can buy that flower. And then we say, I can buy it. Perfect. Now there is just one alternative, yeah, which is I cannot buy that flower. So then we type I cannot buy that flower. Perfect. Then let me just clean that screen, run the script, and then I get I cannot buy that flower. Why? Because I just have 10 euros, the flower costs 15, I evaluate that expression, it returns false, therefore line 28 is ignored then the line 30 should be executed. Not should be, but must be executed. Coming back to that example from Jesse and Walt, we just checked if Jesse was younger than Walt. And we saw that once I have just one comparison, and in case Jesse is older than Walt, nothing will happen. Why? Because here I'm just check if he's younger. So, and if that evaluation, here returns false, that line, in that case, the, the whole block will just be ignored. Perfect. But what are the options? So Jess can be younger, older, or Jess and Walt might be that they are at the same age. So let's just then reproduce all the possibilities. The first one is younger. Perfect. It's already there. The second one is older. Jess would be older than Walt. And the third one, they would be at the same age. And he would write Jess and Walt are at the same age. So that work, that code here works fine. That's completely fine. So if I, if I run it, in that case, Jesse is 85, he's older than Walt, and then you get Jesse is older than Walt. Perfect. Now, if Jesse is 50 and we run it, we should be getting Jesse is younger than Walt. And now it's just show that everything works fine if they are at the same age and there we are jess and walt are at the same age that's perfect but we could improve a bit that code and make it a bit more efficient why because we know in that in advance how many options we have so there are only three alternatives older younger or at the same age so what we can do we can check if jesse is younger if that's not the case we can say else if so he's not younger then the next alternative is if he's older perfect if he's older we return print jazz is older but if not there is just another alternative and nothing else which is the being at the same age all right actually we are almost there so the only thing that we need to change here in python there is no else if so what we do, we just use something called a leaf, but a leaf is just short for a leaf, else if. All right, but now we have our code does the same, but it's, not, it's much more efficient. Why? Because before I had to evaluate three times. Now you evaluate once, and if that expression returns true, the rest of the code or the rest of that statement will be ignored. And then you just go to the next valid python statement so example here so let's use 50 so he's 30. now if i run that code and then we get jesse is younger than Walt. what is happening here we evaluate that expression and that expression returns true because jesse indeed is younger than Walt. and then we get printed in the terminal saying jesse is younger than Walt. Now we don't need to evaluate a leaf and we don't need to evaluate else because we know the answer. The answer is Jesse is younger than Walt. Now if he's older, if he's older, what's happened? We get Jesse is older than Walt. And then again, Python goes to line 58, check that expression, that returns false, the line 59 is ignored, then we check the expression on line 60 and that expression returns true, then the line of 6 to 1 will be executed. Therefore, we get Jesse is older than Walt. And what's happened with that else? Nothing. It's ignored. And 
else is just executed or the else block is just executed if all the conditions are false. So if all the previous conditions are false, and that's it. If you know in advance, if you know in advance the amount of options you have, you should be using if elif else statements.